Sunset Overdrive deserved better. It's one of the best games of the last generation, but instead of being held in such regard, it's being bundled in with Shaq Fu, a legendary born on eBay listings. What the fuck even is Shaq Fu? It sounds like a dodgy PS2 game you'd get on a blank CD from your dad's workmate who casually pirated movies as a side hustle. Did everyone's dad have that same dodgy mate or did my dad just have weird friends? 5,000 likes and I'll make a Shaq Fu video. Welcome back to Sunset City. If you missed the first episode, allow me to catch you up. We play as the nameless unit who grinds more than a Christian couple before marriage. The city is overrun by orange demons as a company called Fisco released a new energy drink that infected anyone who drank it. Me and my boy Walter attempted to escape the city in a DIY helicopter, but found out that there's an invisible force field keeping us all locked in that unfortunately blew up the heli and killed Walter. Now, our only hope of escape is to find the Troop Master Brill Cream at the Japanese Heritage Museum. And yes, Brill Cream is a real name, despite sounding like something you rub on your asshole after some friction burn. So, to the museum I went. And on my way there, I realised that my dude never does any stretches before this vigorous cardiovascular exercise. It's only a matter of time before he pulls a hamstring. I pull up to the Japanese Heritage Museum, and disappointingly, the gift shop section doesn't have an accurate Lego recreation of Hiroshima. There's Lego for everything these days, excuse me for assuming I guess. I do however find Troop Bushido, but no Brill Cream, which is upsetting as I've got some irritation from last night's experiments. The Troop Master is a dude called Norton, and he's quite aggressive, but honestly, I can understand why. I mean, his parents named him after an antivirus software. I call him a dick, because he is. One of the troop agree with me, and she gets sanctioned for treason, the silly flannel. You can't just call your boss a dick and expect no repercussions. Anyway, Brill Cream is missing. It's of course my duty to find him, as this is a video game and everyone else is incapable of breaking their code. The radio signals are all blocked due to a Fizco jammer, so I've got to go destroy it. When I reach the top of the tower, however, I met with a Fizco blimp which doubles as a giant killing machine. Real inconvenient. I've heard massive corporations burying abuse allegations. Sorry, I need to sneeze. <laughs> Ubisoft. But having a giant murderous blimp is another level. Fizco are real shady folk. Oh Sunset, I do love you. In what other game do you have a boss fight with a blimp where you have to bounce on certain radio dishes to trigger an EMP and shoot it with an explosive teddy bear launcher as an EDM banger blasts in the background? Absolute king shit. I defeat the blimp and blow up the jammer while elegantly gliding down to safety using a pair of your mother's underwear from last night. I give Norton Antivirus a quick bell to let him know I sorted the jammer situation, so now I should be able to radio Brill Cream. He sounds surprised that I was still alive, which makes me think he just sent me there to die. He truly is a dick, and not a nice looking one either. Speaking of weird look, can I tell the story? I don't, can I? Hmm. I have a friend who told me that she once slept with a guy who had a dick like a roundabout. It's obviously fairly normal to have some curvature, but no, like we're talking this dude had to get a protractor out to mathematically equate how he would penetrate. Usually I save the maths equations until I'm inside. Anyway, we're going to confront Norton later as Sam needs me to drop by as someone's turned up who wants to see me. What do you know, it's the girl from earlier that I called a cine flannel. Turns out her name is Forkim. She has some intel that Brill Cream might actually be holed up in a hot dog factory. I'm actually traumatised from the word hot dog as whenever I hear it, it reminds me of this time me and my ex were sexting and her phone auto-corrected raw dog to hot dog. I was so worried for a minute. The daddy issues were fine, but a hot dog fetish was where I was going to draw the line. To the hot dog factory, I go, where there's a couple of fellow humans chilling outside, and rather than calmly negotiating a deal for me to enter, I just murder them all in cold blood while doing steezy flip tricks to really rub the salt into the bullet holes. Because this game radiates the same energy as chugging a monster and booting little kids' sandcastles, I can't just enter through the door. I've got to use the crane and smash through the brick wall using a wrecking ball. Miley Cyrus would be proud. After all that effort, still no sign of Brill Cream. There is however a note left by him that said he had plans to meet Norton. Pretty sus. Chances of survival aren't looking too great for old matey Brill Cream, and it's of the utmost importance that we find him as soon as possible. Clearly Forkim didn't get the message though, as she gets herself kidnapped by some scabs. 
I'm not saying there is a convenient time to get kidnapped, apart from maybe on holiday in Portugal with your family, but this really was the worst time possible for Kim. But being the great Samaritan that I am, I go save the flannel, but this time is the last time I'm being on this end of a kidnap. I chase down the train and begin blowing up each carriage one by one, which seems extremely irresponsible as I don't know where 4Kim is on the train, so I could be saving her, or I could be making crispy fried Kim. Who knows? Luckily though for her, I blow up every carriage apart from the one where she was. But it turns out, she didn't even need my help. Having folded all the scabs like deck chairs, 4Kim proves to be a strong independent woman who doesn't need a man's help. With that done, it was time to actually save Brill Cream, who could have mere minutes left to live due to starvation or dehydration. Never mind, my boy Floyd hits me up. He asked me to drop by and bring lots of toilet paper with me, and I don't like to get excited. But with that much toilet paper, we're either going to be circle jerking all night long or taking a shed load of laxatives and I'm down for either. Well, I learnt my lesson on jumping to conclusions as it wasn't either of those, but I wasn't sad for too long. He needed the toilet paper to upgrade my amps and I cruised around, killing OD while listening to a song by Fiddler, one of my favourite bands. Sunset just manages to capture that early 2000s punk aesthetic so perfectly, and maybe that's why I love this game so much. Tony Hawk's Underground 2 loved me more than my parents ever did, so cocaine fueled punk rock music will always comfort me. Okay, time to stop colluding with Floyd about how we can push these amps through Sunset City and actually save Brill Cream. Turns out, all I had to do to find old matey was point this signal receiver that looks like a Dyson blade this fan in different directions until I heard Brill Cream. I actually have one of these at home. But instead of using it to save lives, I use it to listen to my neighbour tell his kids he loves them. I locate Brill Cream, and he's only gone and got himself stuck inside a bin lorry. Don't know why I just called it a bin lorry, I haven't said that since I was about six. You may notice as I'm making my way towards the truck where Brill Cream is located, that I'm now rocking the cock goblin underwear and socks with sandals, as nothing says I'm hung like a horse, quite like this iconic combo. On arrival, I must take out a few more scabs, and I'm honestly beginning to get quite worried for my dude's mental health. Like if we escape the city and get back to normal life, is he just expected to put these hundreds of counts of first degree murder behind him? get an office job, and settle back into society with no guidance counselling? Best not to worry about that now though, as Brill Cream has literally got moments left to live due to his truck being on fire. I make the 200 IQ play and put out the fire using overcharge, which of course attracts plenty of OD. Rumour has it, OD can sense overcharge better than a vegan can sense a protest. Finally, we had saved Brill Cream, and we could return him to the troop no damage done. Well, if by no damage I'm not including his missing limbs, which he ate to stay alive. What a beast. Man literally must have watched every episode of Bear Grylls Man vs Wild. I was expecting to guide back a fully limbed Brill Cream to the troop, but now I'm gonna have to strap him onto my back like a backpack, as something tells me he isn't gonna be walking anytime soon. Rather humiliatingly for Brill Cream, I helplessly carry him home like a jock carrying home the drunk girl he invited over except I have Brill Cream's consent. Back at the troop, I slam down the Nugget who confronts a Vex Norton. Norton's plans had all flown out the window, so it was time for his last resort. Drinking overcharge and turning into a flying dragon eel boss. He also picks up Brill Cream on his way out, as Brill Cream literally cannot do anything. That poor guy, man. He's down so bad right now, he might grow an extra chromosome. Once again, another stellar fight by Insomniac. Grinding, bouncing and boosting your way to catch Norton and eventually landing a killing blow to his head. With order restored, I finally pop the question to Brill Cream about escaping. He hits me with the video game answer of, go speak to this other guy who may build you a boat. All that effort to save this ungrateful nugget and he just points me in another direction. He'd still be stuck in a truck and about to eat his own testicles right now if it wasn't for me. 4Kim gives me a warning that this new faction I've been pointed to are Lars, aka live action role players. Honestly, I don't mind that. Whatever makes you happy, you do you. But I'm just worried about the smell when I get there. It's gonna smell like Comic Con, but no one's showered for two months. So it's gonna smell like Comic Con. I arrive looking to see Ignatius, who is the main man that can build me a boat, but get attacked by a max level knight, archer, and mage. They were seriously about to kill me until I called time out, because everyone complies by these basic human rules like time out and no backsies. Ignatius is sick and needs some modern medicine to help him but these people are stuck in their role play and are trying to heal him using bark. That's like trying to fap using a playboy when the internet exists. Wendy is the only one here who wasn't molested as a child, so isn't stuck in the eternal role play. She acknowledges that Iggy needs modern medicine to actually help, but he won't accept it. So we have to think of a pretty creative solution. 
By that I mean intentionally attach countless leeches to my body, then down an entire bottle of liquid paracetamol and get absolutely off my tits. One incredible trip later, and I come down, hit for six, keeled over in the corner convinced I was dying, just to make sure Iggy didn't have a cold anymore. I'm not even sure that's how leeches work, but at least he can get back on his feet, and now we can crack on with this boat. Well at least that's what I thought, until he calls me a normie and tells me to come back tomorrow. Unnecessarily hurtful, especially after I just had to get three leeches off my gooch, but he knows how to build a boat, and I don't. So I guess he holds all the cards in this situation. Hey, if you want to see more sun- Hey, what, what was that? Hey, what- <laughs> Hey! Thank you guys for all your support on the Sunset Overdrive series. I was unsure about posting that first video because I didn't think it would do that well. Turns out it became the most viewed video on my channel in a month. Eternally grateful and happy to have you here. Thank you guys so much for watching, and a big thank you as always to those of you who click the join button and become a member of the channel. Leave a like, subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye-bye. I would like to just give a big thank you to my motherload void boys and above, Gerardo Cruz, Bjorn van den Hatter, Charlie Wardock, Voyeur's Gay, and the Gamer Tech. Thank you guys for your support.